Welcome back. This is Dan Havey with CF Ninja Hacks. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to do a very simple tool tip anywhere in your ClickFunnels 2.0 account. You could also do the exact same thing in ClickFunnels 1.0. And I suspect probably a whole lot of other softwares. But how a tool tip works, in case you don't know, is you have a little question mark or something here on the screen. And when you put your mouse over it, if you remember to reload your page first, when you put your mouse over it, the little tool tip will appear next to it or anywhere you want it to appear. Of course, you can make it look like anything you want as well. So let me show you how simple this is to set up. So let's go into the editor. The first thing we're going to do is we're just going to add in a text element. And we got our text element here. We are going to click on that text element. We are going to come down here. and We're going to say, let's put in an icon in here and I'm just going to say we want a question mark icon at the end of it. Why not use what ClickFunnels already has built in? You can change the size of this icon of course. Uh, in this case here, let's just uh, let's just make this one really super big for whatever reason I want to. And then what we're going to do is we are going to save this page. And next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back into this headline element and we are going to click on that little uh, icon that looks just like this that was at the top of the page. Let me show that to you again in case you missed it. Just kind of come up here and open it up. And what it's going to do is it's going to open up the CSS, the uh, HTML, JavaScript editor down here at the bottom, and just for that specific element. So if you want it to open for a specific element, you click on that icon that was up here in the corner. If you want to open it up for every single element on the page, you open it up here. But you're going to see there's nothing over here to the right hand side and we needed what was over there and oh, the one other third place I guess you could open it is you come in here and you hover and you click on the code right there for this particular element and the element opens up now there's a lot of different ways we can set up our selectors whether we're going to use an ID selector a class selector a attribute um, there's different ways we can do it but in this case here just for simplicity's sake we're going to click on here and say generate an ID and what that'll do is it'll generate an ID for you. If you then click on the little copy button there and come over here to the left hand side, we can just paste that in. And now we have a, essentially the same thing as the one below here. This uh, ID selector down here is for the first element on the page. So what we're going to do from now on, we're going to look at the top element on the page because I already have that one set up. So let's just take this out of here. Let's just delete that. And in fact, we can even take out this element completely. We are not going to need it. And so again, let's click save. So now again, let's go back into our code. And well, before we go back into the code, let's go look at our tool tip over here and see what this thing really looks like. So what we want to do is we want to come in and we want to inspect this element. A lot of times you just come in and right click on inspect, or you come over here, click on the square with the arrow pointing into it, and you'll have the same effect. If we click on this, we come over here, we then click on the question mark, and it should open us up right here about at this level where it says the I. So here is our headline element. Here is that ID that we generated. This one obviously for the first one, not the second one that I deleted. So that's the ID that we generated. And inside of this headline, then we come down to our icon at the end and is signified by the tag of I. It also says data page element of icon node. And then down here, because this is a font, awesome font, it will have something in this, our, this case here, it says FA question circle, depending on which of the font awesome fonts you use, wherever you see FA in here that refers to font awesome, depending on which one you use, it will have different names describing each one of the particular icons. And then below that here, you have a before, and we'll click on the before, and let me close this up for right now. And right now it says here, our content for FA question circle colon before is slash F059. That is what's referred to as the Unicode for that particular icon. So now what we want to do is we want to say, all right, well, when we hover over this icon, technically the I here, when we hover over this I part here, we want 
that uh, that tool tip to pop up. But one thing we want to do right before that is we want to say um, what I had right here is um, I just wanted to push it up a little bit. So it was level. Otherwise, I said let's move this. Uh, let's move that question mark up five pixels. So that's what I set up right here. I said take the uh, take that ID that we had. And then we had the I for the icon. And then you saw where we had the before, where we had the Unicode in there. And I said, give me a position of relative and a top then of minus five pixels. So I tried doing uh, margin top of minus five pixels. That would not work at all. I found that I had to use actual positioning. And so I used relative positioning. So I'm saying position this element relative to where it started. And relative to where it started, I want it to the, the top of it to go up negative five pixels. So anytime you're going up on top, it is negative and is five pixels up. And uh, so I put the important in there just in case I don't think I needed it to be honest with you. And so that pushed that up five pixels. And that's why it looks like it does right here on the page. And if, again, if I were to take this out, you could see it just uh, drop back down, but we will put that back in. Okay. So now the next thing I have to say is, okay, now when somebody comes in here and hovers over this, what do we want to happen? So I'm going to open up the CSS a little bit wider here so we can see it. And what we want to do is we have to do all of this. And this isn't really that terribly complicated because what we're saying here, exactly the same thing is we're going to take that same icon element. So we got our ID followed by the I signifying that icon. And we're, and we say when we hover over it, we want to actually create what is known as a pseudo element on the page. So up here we had our before pseudo element. Here we have an after pseudo element. The reason why I made it after is because before was already used doesn't matter. You can use them. They don't necessarily have to be before or after anything. You can use them either way because then you position where you want it on the page. And so what we're saying is basically create this new element on the page and then we're going to tell it how big we want it to be, where we want to position, the color, everything we have to tell it about it because this is a completely new element that does not exist on the page. And so we have to say, okay, what do we want this element to look like? And so the first thing we're going to say is this is the content that we want. So now let's say you had a whole bunch of these headlines here. And at the end of each one, you wanted to put in a question mark with a tool tip. You can do that, but you're going to have to do this right here for every single one of those tool tips you put in because you have to give it the words that you want to appear inside of each one. So you could, using some variables, you could do it slightly differently, um, I think, or well, that'd be about the only way I can think of. Uh, but pretty much you just you know copy and paste this a whole bunch of times, put in your different content for each one, and that's the simplest way to do this, to build it as a tool tip. I guess we could build it other ways where we actually put an element on the page and then we hovered. We could actually grab that element and place it on the page. In fact, maybe I'll shoot a video on that afterwards because that would be kind of cool. But either way, then we have to say we need this thing to be positioned absolutely. Okay, so absolute positioning means we are going to position it absolutely within its bounding element. And in this case here, that bounding element cannot have just a standard positioning. It has to have a positioning other than static because the standard or the default would be static. And so in this case here, what I said is we, and why we come up to the top line right there is I said, I want to take again that icon element and I want to give it a position of relative. And then the after I'm going to position that absolutely inside of there and absolutely means I'm going to say exactly where I want it placed relative to that icon element. So we got the after element, we got the icon element. And by saying absolute position, I'm saying I want it absolutely positioned right here relative to this icon that was sitting next to it. And so that's what the top of 18 means. It means move it up 18 pixels. And the right of minus 171 means it move it to the right 171 pixels. You could, of course, use left or bottom. Those are also um, two different properties you could use in conjunction with your positioning. Then I just arbitrarily set up a box of 165 pixels on width. I gave it some boarding. 
uh, boarding, padding, I gave it color, font weight, font size, border, border radius, color, and then a Z index of nine, just to bring it out in front, make sure it's in front of everything else. Z index of one is what everything else on the page should have, unless it's set otherwise. So Z index of nine would bring that to the front. So it's going to be uh, proud of everything else. And so that's really it for this element. Like I said, it looks a little fancy, but you basically have to completely rebuild the entire element from scratch with all of its CSS to be able to get to see it on the page. And I do believe that's everything we needed to look at on this, except to go over here and take a look at it again. And so like I said, for every one of these you want to build, you're going to have to go through, copy and paste this. Obviously, for each one of these elements as you create them, you're going to create an ID like I did earlier in the video. Make sure you grab that ID, swap it out for what you have here at the beginning, change out your content. You may want to change the shape, shape or size or positioning of the element as well. But the nice thing about how this worked out now is no matter what width I have on the screen, uh, let me see here, let me try to narrow this down some, no matter what width I have on the screen, it's going to stay in the same place. We'll just move this around a little bit. So it's always going to stay perfectly positioned right to the right hand side of that question mark. And again, of course, you can position it anywhere you want by changing what you have in here for your top and your right. So that is it for this video. If you have any questions, just let me know.